when we are trying to perform causal inference, or at least trying to uncover a valid and unbiased estimate right, of that parameter correlation, we are assuming that the data have normal distributions for both the x and the y. And this is important, right, because essentially what we're doing is if we are going to be resampling our data, we want to make sure that if we are sampling uh, on an upper value of our x, that we have enough data, right? Or if we're sampling for a lower value of x, that we have enough data, right? Because if we don't, what's going to happen is we're relying on a very small subset of a already small subset of data, which is going to give us pretty wild estimates, right? Or bounds on the sampling distribution of that correlation coefficient. So let's look at our data and we can see at least for the distribution of reported weight, that actually seems to be quite normally distributed. But when we look at the actual weight, we find that in fact we have a pretty wide variation and we have some pretty, I guess, obese individuals, which is interesting because it seems like people actually tempered themselves and more people actually quoted themselves as being moderately weighted. But we can see that in fact, the distribution is quite skewed to the upper bounds. So there are some people that weigh quite a lot and are wildly underreporting their weight. Now this is going to be a problem, right? Because when we're sampling and we start sampling at the higher distribution of the actual weight, there's going to be very few participants that we're making any inferences on. Now, as I said, in the sample, this assumption might be violated. And so we're going to go ahead and use the bootstrapping approach anyway, but I just wanted to note that in general, you should go through this procedure. So what we're going to do essentially with bootstrapping is we're going to run or conduct k number of samples. So we will generate one sample. We will get a correlation coefficient for that one sample of 50 observations. Then we'll put all those observations back into our bigger sample. Then we'll do a second subsample. We'll get another correlation coefficient. And when we do this k times, so we can do this 50, 50 bootstrapping rounds, we can do it 100 times, 100 bootstrapping rounds. And this is going to give us an empirical sampling distribution for the estimator or our correlation coefficient r. And again, this distribution is going to, going to give us an idea of the variability of the sampling distribution of our estimator r, not the parameter p, right? Now, in the next one, in the next uh, short module, sorry, we're going to be talking about how we actually go about conducting this bootstrapping method in R.